Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome to our newest full playthrough, pretty much the opposite of the previous one. Welcome to the Divine Turtle Conglomerate, an empire which cares about two things and two things alone, and honestly, these two can very much be interchangeable. It cares about profits, and it cares about the Divine. This is a megachurch. This government is an oligarchy based on a curious blend of commercial and spiritualist values, in which the positions of ordained minister and corporate officer have merged into a single role, an empire which essentially acts as a single organisation more so than a government. This of course is a corporate authority empire, and I think it's going to be incredibly powerful. So what exactly is the megachurch? Well, they are regular spiritualists, they are authoritarian, and they are xenophiles, which means extra trade value and envoys, since we do want to be making commercial deals with pretty much everyone. They are authoritarian, giving them extra influence to begin with and extra worker resource output, which also unlocks indentured assets. And it also has spiritualist, which means we get extra unity, we can build temples, and most importantly, we have the gospel of the masses. The gospel of the masses means anyone who is spiritualist, that is any of your populations which identify as spiritualist, will give additional trade value. They are giving to the church at the end of every single month. It also increases our spiritualist ethics attraction by 50%. So although we are not fanatic spiritualists, we are going to be getting a lot of spiritualists, and we will be rushing at temples to begin with, building them absolutely everywhere. Now sadly, the temple does override the standard unity building for the megachurch, for the corporate authority, which is a little bit sad because that can generate a lot of trade value, but it also increases spiritualist ethics attraction on the planet, which means more tithes for the divine conglomerate. Because it is authoritarian, it also has indentured assets. This mega corporation specializes in large indentured workforces. It has little to do with the barbaric practice of owned populations. These workers are merely paying off their debts indefinitely. These are fellows who went against the church and are now working to find redemption. We are saving their souls and if we don't have to pay them consumer goods to do their jobs, and they actually give bonus output while doing those jobs, then that is simply the will of the conglomerate. The background of the Turtle Conglomerate is fairly straightforward. We have the Ring World Origin, because I honestly think it's going to be incredibly powerful. We are trying to go for power level today to see if we can fight off the Endgame Crisis on the second earliest year we can possibly spawn it at maximum difficulty. So when the Ring World was destroyed with the Marauding Planet, two of these sections were turned offline and now need drastic repairs. One section is destroyed forever, and we have survived on the remaining section. Our forerunners sadly did not not make it, although their buildings and their lifestyle certainly did. After crawling out of the water, we survived because we were in the bodies of water throughout the ring world, it turns out they lived lives of luxury. Through their accumulated wealth, they were living long, healthy lives in which they were pampered day and night, and ultimately lived pretty much exactly the life most beings want to live. As the primitive turtle civilizations left the water, they beheld marvels, which simply were divine to them to begin with. They saw the ring world itself stretch off into the distance. They saw the buildings left behind by the forerunners. They saw the works of art, the works of literature, and everything else which had survived the cataclysm, and came to the only logical conclusion. These forerunners were there to show the turtles where to go. Now, over time, they realized this wasn't quite the case, but it was still now part of their faith. They had realized that this is the ultimate goal of their species, to attain that level of advancement, that they can live lives of luxury, every last one of them, or at least so their leaders would say. At this point, economy and faith had already become one for the turtles. Perhaps they did believe in other things, such as the Shroud and everything else, but value was above all else, their spirituality. Now that the Turtles have developed a lot more, they have space travel, they have computing, they are able to see the records of the Forerunners a lot more clearly, they realise the Forerunners were essentially just another species like themselves. However, they still hold them in the highest regards as essentially pseudo-divinity, because they knew things that the Turtles still do not know thousands of years ago. Clearly, 
They were put there by a divine purpose. Clearly, they knew the way forwards, but were simply struck down before they had a chance to succeed. And that is where the turtles will. Now, when it comes to traits, they have enduring, so they have extra lifespan, they have traditional, of course, with extra unity, and they have thrifty, all going off what the forerunners would want of them. Now, they do also have unruly, because I believe, although this empire does have a tendency to do one thing, to try and do what their divinity say so, they are also going to be unruly. They're going to be fighting each other for the top spots, and ultimately, this is going to cause problems. These will change later on. I'm still not uh, completely sure which Ascension perk to go with, if I can say it there. But, yeah. Ascension perk, Ascension path. So if we go with genetics, unruly will definitely be removed. If not, it may be removed. We will see. There's a good chance we will go with psionic, although I am tempted to do this run without any of the standard ascension paths. That is, we don't become synths, we don't become psychics, and we don't become genetic masters instead, going with some of the other ascensions, because we just never pick them. And there are some really good options now, especially with edicts. Um, with the extra edict capacity, it means we can have up to three if we choose the ascension perk, without any empire sprawl problems, which can be incredibly powerful. Plus 10% research, um, I think it's research output, and everything else, all active at once, can be insanely good. I think there's one for alloys, one for consumer goods. You get the point. That could be really powerful. We could build the Colossi. There's a lot of stuff that we can do. So how will this empire play? Well, the main thing we need to do, now I've said this a million times, I'll probably say it a million times more because of how powerful federations are, but we need to rush a federation. But we really need to rush a federation. The trade federation is incredibly powerful. And I'll explain more of that when we get into the game itself, but we need this. And so what we may end up doing is something a little bit weird. If we can't find an ally within the first 20 or 30 years, we will make an ally, and that's actually not all that difficult to do. It's a very weird thing to do, but it's not all that difficult. What you need to do is have a sector far enough away from the home system that it is in fact its own sector, and then you need to sacrifice it, turning it into a vassal, which is actually very easy to do. Once it's vassalized, it will have all the same government as you, will have all the same ethics and everything else, and you can then turn them into your ally and put them into the federation. And one way of cheesing this a little bit is to cut off all of these systems around a single planet, this planet will then become its own sector which isn't attached to anything else, so then when you sacrifice the sector, it only has that one planet, and then you simply build around it. You are using it purely to make a federation that will have no real power or anything else, it's there purely to start levelling up a federation nice and early. But I think it is still worth doing as much as it is very weird, because again, the trade Federation is very powerful because of the trade policy it gives you. But I'll explain more of that again once we get into the game itself. So what we're going to do is start the mid game a little bit earlier, so hopefully it doesn't spawn near us. We have the end game, only one off being the absolute earliest. I am going to have the spiral um, galaxy again. It did make it a little bit easier in the previous playthrough, but I really loved how the empires took shape. I don't know if that's something I will continue to do forever. It's definitely not the most difficult option. I think the most difficult option is just the regular galaxy, honestly, since it's a bit more difficult to have choke points. But yeah, I really do love the spiral effect. And plus, perhaps what we could do is turtle up, which I now realise could be a pretty obvious joke, and try to just keep the endgame crisis away from us and just survive, which would be really, really fun. That is, to survive forever. Depends how cruel we are near the end, if we could just leave everyone else to die whilst we stay in our little pocket of the galaxy. Actually, you know what? No, it's, it is too easy. I think I'm just going to go with the standard galaxy type this time around and we are going yep high difficulty maximum difficulty as well let's go high aggressiveness am i already too tired to be recording this and so we begin on the very edge of the galaxy close to the very very top so then what are our goals straight away well honestly the main goal we have is to build up our ring world as soon as possible some of the jobs you can get here are insanely powerful especially if you take a look at the commercial segment the commercial segment will allow you to have merchants this early on which are incredibly powerful giving you loads of trade value and loads of amenities for your empire which hopefully will also get a federation fairly quickly which means we have the ultimate version of our 
trade policy, which will give us both unity and consumer goods along with our energy. At the moment, we're just going with pure energy, then probably energy and unity, and then all of them combined once we have a federation. So trade value is obviously king here, since it gives us everything we need. So, let's see if we can rush that. Now, because we do have the Ring World as our starting origin, we have the unique Arcane Generator, which will provide you with the energy and rare materials needed to sustain one of each Ring type. As you can see here, the Arcane Generator will adapt, so it is able to supply the upkeep for this segment. Sadly, only one of each, but still, it makes it even more important to have the commercial segment up and running nice and quickly. And to help with this, we have some ruins, the tunnels here. If we clear the tunnels, we get minerals, and we get the rare goods needed to build the segment. Still need to save up for the rest of the minerals, though. Extra research, that's fine. Extra research, that's fine. Extra minerals, uh, not really good for us, since we're not going to have any mineral jobs for a while. Extra Corvette hull, that's fine as well. And we're going to do the usual. Completely gutting our main ship. So that we get a bonus set of alloys to begin with. And what I'd like to do, very quickly on, before we have too many populations growing, is I would love to build our very first temple. Oh, I thought a temple was a little bit more expensive than that. Okay, that's fine. It's a hundred cheaper than I thought. The Jeez, temple will provide cool. us with unity, society research, amenities, and spiritualist ethics attraction. Right now, yeah, we've only got 23% of our population being spiritualist. We obviously want as many as possible, since we get some free trade value out of them. With the gospel of the masses. <laughs> That's interesting. So, I've never really read this one. This is what happens when you find life on other planets. So, I've just found some animal life, some basic life on this planet. Although it's not intelligent. Is this proof that the Turt Lads are the lords of all within creation? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Remember, our very faith stems from the simple fact that greed is good. That we deserve everything. We're not going to be hostile to all aliens. In fact, if they follow our faith, then it's fine. They can Absolutely. have the exact same rules we abide by. We're not particularly xenophobic in that way. But any who dare to defy us or try to keep things from us, <laughs> well... We're going to have lasers. Oh, lovely. I love this precursor. So, this precursor is the hive mind, and it will give us the ability to turn worlds into Gaia worlds. And it even gives us a few free populations from it. That is actually lovely. Really happy with that. It's also a nice one because you don't have to go out and find all the different events. You get them scattered around your home systems with these archaeological sites. So, you even get a good few of the minor artifacts. I think this actually this might be my favorite of all the remnants. Is it the strongest? I don't think so. Uh, things like the First League giving you a good relic world and stuff like that, that's also really powerful. And of course the Cybrex giving you a ring world to repair, very powerful. But I think this is my favorite just from a fun perspective. Oh, will I have enough now to build our thing? Oh, not quite. So close, so very, very close to building our commercial district. Okay, so I'm thinking is expansion, then either domination or prosperity, and then diplomacy. It all depends on w when we find allies. Now, with domination, the reason why I want to go down this route is purely because of the extra influence. I want to expand quickly, grab as much as possible, as I would love if we could go down the route of the Arcology Project for once. Because I never do this, and it's so powerful, and it's so fun. But I always end up going with ring worlds instead. Also, I do want to be si uh, psionic as soon as possible. I always try and say psychic and then correct myself at the last second. I want to be psionic because that way we can make a deal with the Instrument of Desire, which is essentially Slanesh from the Warhammer 40k universe, the God of Desire. And with that, we get extra stuff. You know, greed. I've also been thinking as to why we are xenophilic, because does it really fit our empire? And I honestly think it does, because to me, this represents our love of new shiny things. Other empires, other bits of the galaxy all have things to offer for us. Upscaling. We are all seeking more for ourselves, to better ourselves, or to simply gain more property, to gain more influence, more power, more shiny rocks. We want everything. And because we don't particularly hate any other empire, in the slightest really, I think it makes complete sense that we would be classed as a xenophile. A xenophile with 
ulterior motives, yeah. Outlier identified. But a xenophile nonetheless. Now, I was a little bit slow getting the tunnels up and running. I really should have done this earlier. I don't know why I spent so much on minerals. My bad. It ultimately, though, hasn't really affected anything. It just means we're about a year behind on building the commercial district. That's not really going to do much in the long run. Okay, I'm on hurry up, though. And we do have plenty of science vessels already. Which is pretty darn lovely. Fantastic. Now, our first few worlds are probably going to be dedicated to Empire Sprawl and Alloys, since the Ringworld itself can deal with a lot of tech and a lot of basic economy. So we just need more Alloys, more Empire Sprawl, anything else really. Even consumer goods are going to be dealt with eventually by the Ringworld, so not really. Fantastic. Now, saying that, we don't really need these bureaucrats right now, so I'm going to remove one of you. And then I'll remove the other one once we have the commercial segment and we need more people to work these specialist jobs. Or just before it's built anyway. Research actualized. Hey, we've got some free tech. Oh. Lots of aliens found us then. Okay, found our neighbours. Hopefully they're friendly. We can form a federation nice and quickly with them. And then found some just random hostiles. That's fine. Federation builders. They are materialists. But not fanatic materialists. So they're not going to hate us completely. Oh, they may hate what we're going to try and do here, though. Okay, guys. Uh, both of you just stop. Both of you survey that system, then survey that system. We are going to be stealing that from them right now. Grab those two systems, completely block them off. You stop as well. Survey that system first. So you two jump there, you jump there. Yep. So two mold over there. That could be... So if we can't get these fellows to join us in friendship and join our federation, what we can do is build up to here, colonize the tomb world, turn it into a vassal. That poor vassal will be so weak, but it doesn't really matter. And then they can almost instantly join a federation with us if we free them. And they just get that one system and I don't really care too much. Yes, they aren't even expanding in this direction. fan bloody tastic And with all our relics, we're going to be doing this as often as possible. Proclaim religious revelation. Giving us a chunk of unity and increasing our spiritualist ethics attraction by 50%. So loads more people are going to follow that. Oh yeah, forgot to put our new scientist as the leader. There we are. Well done, laugh it. I don't like your name. It's very close to a name of someone I know. Lath. Okay, female Lath, you go ahead and be the ultimate physics researcher. I mean, you know it's not Can me, because it'd be a... I guess technically a society researcher, because I'm a biologist. Research actualized. Far more fun. I used to deal with disease and rot. Doesn't seem like they're expanding this way. Also, I'm going to grab the system first, then this one to be a little bit more efficient. Also, am I currently, yeah, thought I wasn't on Expansionist. This one's so nice, though. Plus 10% trade value just means we can get everything done inside our borders nice and easily. But this is not the one time I'm going to keep it as Expansionist. I'll swap it back later. So, we have formed a commercial pact with the Federation Builders. Which means we can start putting down our branch offices fairly soon, which can be very, very powerful this early on. Just loads of extra resources. We're going to be the best of friends until we betray that until we form a federation with them. Which I totally won't completely control by the end. Because we're good. Just occurring to me, I actually don't quite know which one of these essential perks I want to go with. I kind of want to go with the Arcology Project, because I haven't done that in ages. Xeno Compatibility, because I haven't done it in ages. There's a lot of options here. Actually, I did do Arcology Project somewhat recently, but didn't really use it to its max. We already have a lot of worlds, especially worlds we're not particularly going to get much use out of. Oh wait, no, yes we are, we're going to turn them to Gaia worlds. That does make the Arcology Project a little bit worse, because all of our worlds will be perfect worlds. Eventually. So what do I really want? So, two points for Transcendence, because we need both of them here. One for Technological Ascendancy, because it's amazing. I would love Consecrated Worlds. Maybe? It is really good if you find a few natural Gaia worlds. You can't have them inhabited though, so I'm not sure about that one. So, three for now. I would like one vision for the governing ethics attraction. 
Especially since I do want uh, migration treaties with other empires. That would be fantastic. Defender of the Galaxy is almost a must because how early we've set everything. So then, Galactic Wonders, Master Builders. That does leave us with one extra, but... Oh, I really don't know. I do not know. For now, though, we'll just go with the one I know I want to keep. Technological Ascendancy, plus 10% research speed, and we're more likely... Thank you. We're more likely to get the rare text. Identified. Oh, you're a desert dweller. I thought you were ice. Still great. It means we can grab this world and use it. Incoming now, transmission. how about... No, I'm not going to be vassalized. Anyway, you're a, uh, a pacifist. You can't do anything about that. You can't go to war with me to say, Oh, I want to vassalize you. You just can't. I don't think. Hoping not. Oh, this is the adult... Oh, this is fantastic. These both are tomb worlds and will both have populations on them. That is a lovely thing to see this early. This is actually a really nice start. Not the most mind-blowing one I've seen, but lots of passive stuff that's going to help us a lot uh, later on. So, we are xenophiles, but does that mean I can't... Excellent, I can still take over their worlds. Special project actualized. Okay, I want to grab this one first anyway, but you need to start going that way. So you can start grabbing that, and we need to make some ground forces. We're going tomb world occupying. We have found two more empires, annoyingly somewhat boxing us in. We have the Covenant over here, which I've... Got a weird feeling we're actually after our ring world. Don't know why. Maybe they're like halo-shaped things. Either way, over here we also have the Confederation, an empire which really wants to dislike us, but I am going to force them to like us anyway. So I am trying to improve relations as they are trying to harm our relations. And the reason is I don't want them to go to war with us because I am grabbing all of these. We have the ruined worlds over here. Which I believe can have an event to give you the racket species. At least you used to have that event. Um, I'm not sure if it's still the case. But either way, these are really, really lovely worlds. Other than the fact they are tomb worlds. But remember, we can turn worlds into Gaia worlds. Which will be really, really amazing. So I want all of these as soon as possible. We have the Fallen Outpost. We have the Lost Encampment. The Ruinous Core. Then over here we have the Silent Colony, the Decayed Hub, and the Crumbling Borough. So we have a lot of things there. So I've been rushing here. Thankfully, they seem to be expanding this way and this way. I don't know why they would do that. I guess two worlds just don't have much value to them. But yeah, we want all of these as soon as possible. Which is kind of annoying, though, because there's a Relic World there. There's a Savannah World I want. And there's even these two. T oh, Tomb Worlds! I didn't even think about this. So these primitives like Tomb Worlds. We have two molds over here. Yes, we need those two molds. We need them now. These primitives are going to be enlightened, given so much, so that they may give so much to us. It's the circle of life, the circle of commerce, the circle of shiny. It's so lovely having such a strong economy this early on. So what I'm going to be doing is removing the commercial zones and the civilian industries to build two more temples. Remember that each temple, even if it's not worked, will increase our spiritualist ethics attraction, so we'll have more spiritualists on the ring world. Right now, we only have 16%, which is insanely low, so I really, really, really want to increase that. So more temples, more temples, absolutely everywhere. Identified. Still rushing to build the research segment, though I am holding off a little bit, so rushing slower, because I do want more resources to make sure we have all of this sorted out first. Right now, just really great economy. We can spread very easily. Only influence holding us back. And even that isn't too bad. Where did I get the influence one? Okay, I got influence from the event, and I was not paying attention. Oh, it was from meeting the curators? You get some influence from that, right? I don't know. Either way, we managed to get some influence. Upscale. Upscale well, that's not great. Was a construction Market vessel now line. grabbing this system? So soon they'll grab that. I re want all three of these. What we need is a defensive pact, just so they're unlikely to attack us. Oh, never mind, they are guaranteeing our independence, so if they want to attack us, they'll have to fight the Confederacy. That's not going to happen. How about you? Do you like us enough? You're cordial, so eventually you might end up liking us enough. Potentially. Potentially. 
Okay, stop what you're doing. You know what? Just jump over there so you can grab that as soon as... In fact, no, jump over here so you can grab that as soon as possible. That way we can box them off. Market survey We're now grabbing the star base. We are taking over the primitives. Planetary market secured. Fantastic. Our divine right shines true. Upscaling complete. Greed is good. Through greed, we will have a better life. Ah, annoyingly. You do need some more rulers there. Um, for now, just build a temple? Yeah, let's try and turn you all into spiritualists. Uh, at least you are authoritarian, so you have at least one thing in common with us. Not too much. Okay, and what is this species like? Ooh, Alpha intelligent and charismatic. Quarrelsome, though. And I'm assuming you're going to be militarist as well, considering you just both nuke each other into a new dark age. Asset. Seems like... Okay, so you're just uh, authoritarian and militarist. You are authoritarian xenophobe militarist. Okay, sure, a bit worse. Materialist isn't too bad. Sorry, materialist, not militarist. So I'm going to resettle some of you then onto these. In fact, I don't need to resettle you. You'll be our first colonists. I mean, they are charismatic. They explain to us that they want these worlds. And we agreed. That is insane. That is such a good combo of things to find. This set of worlds along with these is just so useful. Potential market survey More temples! Ooh. Oh no, the pheromone one. I think this ends badly. So I'm just gonna remove that. Oh, is that why you're not spreading very quickly? They are isolationists, which means even to harm relations, it costs them influence. <laughs> They're trying to make us rivals, but it's just not happening because we like them too much. For now, we'll eventually try and take everything they own, but you know, for now, we're very, very pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. We now also have a commercial pact with the Covenant. The question is, are we ever going to be hostile with you? You are a spiritualist. Fanatic egalitarian, yet you still like us. Which is somewhat surprising. You call us a tyrant, but you love our deals. <laughs> credits, credits, credits. And they say money can't buy friendship. Potential market survey. What completed. silly Xenos would say that? We're gonna have more of this um of this primitive species than our main species at this rate. There's so many worlds being dedicated to them. Okay, we'll give one world to the other one. A fantastic start. Now, I was tempted originally by the Arcology Project, but then decided not to because we are getting the Hive Mind Precursor, enabling us to make Gaia worlds anyway, so the worlds are already going to be more powerful. But we have this many planets. The Arcology Project is really good for consumer goods, for alloys, and that's about the two main things it can be used for. The ring worlds tend to win out for trade value, which obviously is very important to us, and for research. We could go with both, but the amount of influence we would need for that is insane. Each Arcology Project takes 200 influence, but I guess it wouldn't be too bad with the Galactic Wonders if we only go for ring worlds, since they're 300 influence. But you have to build the frame and then build each individual segment before building a new one. That's not actually that much per year, on average. It's only when you're trying to do everything else, like the Dyson Spheres, that it becomes super expensive. So perhaps both is the way forward. We could become insanely powerful, because just this start has such potential. It's not the most insane start I've ever had, but maybe one of the most heavy potential starts. Upscaling also, Empire Sprawl. We need to fix that, like, now. Yay, more bureaucrats. Oh, we need more bureaucrats. This is a big deal because we are what we are. We are corporate. And corporate's more affected by the Empire Sprawl penalty. So that could be a problem. Incoming inquiry. You're never going to hate us enough. You're going to keep on trying, but it ain't going to work. We could have a migration treaty with the Covenant. That way we could use this world as well, the Arctic world, since they seem to have an ice preference. 
I think. Yep, Arctic. Um, perhaps. Right now, I'm using the Arctic world for free populations. I keep on sending colony ships, it colonizes, then we send the populations back to the ring world to boost the ring world up. And I'm tempted just to leave that as it is. I don't really care about having more than one member in the Federation, so going to war with the Covenant isn't really a terrible thing for us. Actually, that is a problem with having the Confederacy in our Federation. They're going to say no to pretty much every deal we make, sorry, every war we try to make. You know, I am back tempted, because of that idea, I am still tempted then to move over here, grab this world, destroy this system, turn this into a vassal, make them our Federation members. They'll have the exact same ethics as us. And although we are Xenophile, we shouldn't be as bad as they are when it comes to war, because, you know, these are pacifists. That sounds really convoluted, but I think it might be the best way forward. Being in a federation with ourselves. God, that's introverted. I love it. So I've been having a look at my factions, which I swear I've just called federations like 20 times. I'll try to explain it a second ago, so this is attempt three. And I've noticed something a little bit problematic. First of all, the Xenophiles are utterly dominating in terms of support, which is good because they're easier to please than the others, and although they are upset at the moment, they're still at 65% approval. But then we have Spiritualists really low in support, which is the opposite of what I want. I wish I was Fanatic Spiritualist right now, it'd be much easier to bump them up a bit. And it turns out they don't even like us going to Tomb Worlds. I never realised this before. Unhallowed ground. So minus 5% happiness. Eventually, we, we will at least get this, the Sarnic Pursuit, but they also want to have at least 25% support. It is very difficult right now, so just continue to build temples, try my best to support spiritualism, but right now, the Xenophiles are running away with it. Which, I guess, does make sense in our empire, since the Xenophile trade value and everything kind of represents the collective greed of the empire, the want for more. The desire to collect. The spiritualism is tied into that, but it's not as dominant a force within the Empire. We've now finished off domination, giving us one additional influence per month, which will be fantastic, and now we get to choose a new Ascension perk. So let's have a quick look-see at the ones I'm definitely going to get over time, and then see how many free perks we have. So, these are the ones I really want. Xeno compatibility, giving us plus 20% population growth as long as there's two different species on the planet and producing half species with one additional trait point and one additional maximum trait. This is just lovely. And plus 33% immigration pull. If we're friendly with the other empires, or at very least with our federation member, we're gonna get additional immigration, which is great, more population growth. I want the Arcology Project because we're just getting so many planets, and if we do become more aggressive later on, we'll be taking planets from others. I want Galactic Wonders, and I want Master Builders, so that's four already. If I have that, I pretty much need that for the additional build speed. After this, then, we have the two to become Psionic, which will be... which are somewhere I am blind. There we go, Mind Over Matter and Transcendence. And we're already running into a problem then. So that's all taken up except for one slot. So we only have one available to us. And I'm thinking this time we run with Executive Vigor. It's not particularly useful right now. But it'll give us plus two to our Edict capacity. And Edicts are now incredibly powerful. Things like just this. Extended Shifts. Plus 10% output from our workers and our own populations. They're less happy, but plus 10% is a big deal, especially considering our own populations can work specialist jobs. Plus 10% research, plus 10% alloys. It's fantastic. Veneration of saints, our priests become more powerful, and more spiritualist ethics attraction. And these are just the ones we have now. We'll get more stuff later on as well, like increased population growth. So having three of them rather than just one, considering they affect our empire sprawl massively for everyone you go over your limit, I think that's really good. So, yeah, gonna go with Executive Vigor. This Empire does have the potential of really late game powerhousing, but it's just getting there, and with the early end game and early mid game, I am nervous. I am. I feel like this might be a bit too slow of an Empire. Actually, I do want to rush towards this world. 
but they're likely to get it first anyway. And I would like to finally get this Relic World, so okay, let's just finally grab these. Yes! Protective! <laughs> Protect the turtles, for we are spiritualists just like you! Fantastic. I mean, you still won't make any deals with us, but you've opened up your borders to us, and you're no longer threatening us. All around us will aid us in this early, frail time. <laughs> oh, it pays to be xenophiles. Everyone likes you. No one looks into your sketchy past and how many xenos we uh, put into... You know, certain jobs. <laughs> Trust us, this is in your best interest. The trade value will spread, everyone will be happy. Now that we have no threats, we are breaking this defensive pact. Now that we already have some of you within our empire, we are breaking this migration treaty. The influence will be returned to us. At the end of the month. Fantastic. Five per month now. Oh, Covenant, you're being very annoying with how you're expanding. How soon are we going to be aggressive? That's the question. Should we start moving into alloy production now or not? Probably should leave it a while. Diplomatic Grants. So this is another edict which gives us one additional envoy. That might not sound like much, but once we have the Galactic Community, that represents a 10%, I think it's 10% anyway, increase in our diplomatic weight. That really speeds up just how fast we can become powerful. And once we can reform our government, we're also going to be adding Public Relations. Where are you? There we are, the Public Relations Specialist, giving us plus 10% weight by default and two more envoys. This will eventually be swapped over for something like free traders once we're more powerful, but for now it is what it is. We're not super powerful this early in the game. I mean, it has only been 27 years, but still. But again, the potential of this empire is just insane. And we're about to send a colony over here, and this will become our vassals. So how this works is we will remove the system here. This turns this into its own sector because sector is now automatic. We then turn that sector into its own vassal. That vassal becomes really friendly with us, we release them, we allow them to join a federation with us, then we get the special type of trade. Apparently another one of our tomb worlds has a ruined particle accelerator. These are going to be good science worlds then. Veneration of Saints is now active, giving us additional priest output and additional spiritualist ethics attraction. We really need to deal with our empire sprawl right now, but it's because we just got so many colonies at once, it's caused a bit of a problem. Gonna make you into an agricultural district because I've just started building up a new commercial segment which will take up most of our farmer jobs and give them to, well, turn them into merchants, artisans and clerks. In fact, I'm even tempted to remove the agricultural segment altogether and eventually I will be at least replacing it with one of the others. Though right now it is free of charge because of the arcane generator. But this is gonna give us a lot more trade value. Annoyingly, one of the final archaeological sites for the Precursors is here, so I can't turn them into a vassal quite as fast as I wanted. Maybe I really should have rushed um, the Federation over here rather than going with Domination first. Maybe that would have been a better call. Actually, don't do that. I would love extended shifts soon. Well, perhaps even information quarantine. Plus 5 stability, plus 50% governing ethics attraction. Okay, it's time. So I've split up this system here. So now this is its own sector before it was part of the main sector. Going into sectors now. That's this one. Create vassal. And done. There we go. Incoming inquiry. Dirt Lad Fellowship Temple. Oh no, they don't like wars of aggression either, even our little minions don't. Well, that's a problem. Say, you like war, don't you? Confederation. And you're not far off accepting that. 
how about we make a deal? Another thing to note is that even if these would vote against us, we can eventually have the Federation, so it's a... Well, it's a diplomacy of whoever's the most powerful, which would be us. So we decide when we go to war. Honestly, we're not going to war for a while anyway, but yeah, we could make the Temple part of our Federation, yeah, eventually the Confederation as well, since the Confederation seems fairly warmongering. We supply them with weapons, they supply us with fighters. Yep, this doesn't sound evil in the slightest. Oh boy. We now have migration treaties with all empires around us. Because I've activated Land of Opportunity. Those outside the Empire see the non-owned populations living in luxury, even the owned populations elevated to higher levels of society, although of course their freedom may be compromised, their living standards are actually pretty good. And they want some of this, it may be a chance when entering our Empire, but for some, for the needy, the downtrodden, the chance is all they need. A chance for a better life, even if it is truly a gamble. Some may end up in indentured servitude, but some will rise the ranks and live in luxurious utopia. We don't prey on the weak and the downtrodden in the slightest. We have found the home world of the Precursor. Well, I think it's actually the uh, Precursor's killer. But nonetheless, we found the home world. It gives us a size 20 tomb world, and we can now turn our worlds into Gaia worlds. We also have the passive effect of plus 10% population growth speed. There we go. And there they are. Oh, they are fanatic pacifists. Well, we'll break that out of them over time. They are venerable. They are agrarian. They are delicious. They are communal. And they are slow breeders. But still, four free populations... And now our world is a Gaia world. Annoyingly, our potential allies are now at war, which is going to take them way too long to stop, and thus it's going to delay our Federation even more. We can't allow this, so we're going with the original... Well, the second original plan. For now, it's fine. We can just go with War Philosophy, Liberation. We'll change that back later. It's going to be a while before we're strong enough to fight anyway. Trade League, of course. And there we are, we are a federation. With our former colony. So with this, what we get straight away is the trade league stance. So if you watch my consumer goods, currently minus 8, and then plus 40. fan bloody -tastic. And this is because now we have the trade league trade policy, which combines all of them, so we get unity, consumer goods, and energy. Which is fairly fantastic. It means we really don't have to focus on civilian industries at all anymore. And we can use them for pretty much anything else we want. You're going to be a temple. I can simply minimise the jobs here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put pop down the research segment now. Incoming. My stammer's Incoming. been really obvious today. Anyway, building the research segment. Once we have this up and running, we can start moving our artisans into researchers. As long as we have enough consumer goods. And we should do as we increase our trade value from our other worlds. Well, this could be really good or really bad, considering our Federation ally is so weak. So we have upcoming trial logistics remodeling. So what this is going to do is give us bonuses, because this is very similar to the other Federation events. I've personally never had this one before, so I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be given. But it looks like our ally won't be able to get the basic requirements sorted. Participation requires a system with at least 50 trade value flowing through it. Furthermore, the existence of an off-world trading company would mean increased statistical data, and so is encouraged. Essentially, okay, I'm going to allow this, obviously, since that's the only option, actually, but I don't think our ally can do this. So, uh, by the looks of things, we're trialing a new project, which will give us more commerce in the future by remodeling things, but it will cost us a little bit in the short term for more profits in the long term. We'll accept this, 
and hopefully we'll be able to get this done. It also said you need 50 credits flowing through a system. Well, we don't really have that so much because all of our credits right now are being generated in our home system. We are not particularly rich outside of that just yet. One, two, three, four. And even if I upgrade my star base, which I can do, I can't... Oh, sorry, I am doing. I still can't reach this one for 25, so this is going to be a bit difficult. Well, here's hoping this is okay. I'm hoping it can choose That's your starter really system. Complete. I'm hoping it counts the capital as trade value flowing. Though I'm honestly thinking it might not, because 50 is not much. And even if you're not going for trade value, you will probably have that in the later game. We had this federation very early. Ultimately, I think we're going to lose out on this, which is kind of sad. Hopefully it'll work, but yeah... What can we do? Uh, if we stop trade value... Okay. If we take away this trade hub, we can get this trade hub... No, we can't. I was going to say we could get all the other systems to flow together. In fact, yes, we can. Okay, so here's the idea. We make this one here into a starbase, a starport, give it the trading buildings, feed it into here, and then over to star room money. We also make this into a star put. This feeds through here. This means that this system will have over 50. Right? Again, I don't know how this works. Maybe I'm being silly. Maybe it will be absolutely fine with the home system, with the capital. I just don't know. Okay, so thankfully we were accepted. And yeah, it turns out the home system is allowed. I don't think our ally has anywhere near that trade value. No, because we gave them nothing to start off with. <laughs> they are just absolutely nothing. So it's just us working alone here. So hopefully I'll get something from this still. So I cancelled some of the star bases just because right now I don't want to pay on the upkeep. I am allowing this star base to finish off though. Uh, just because I do want this to eventually be a... There's a name for it there. Oh, I want this one here actually though to be our new shipyard. This is going to be just trade hubs because eventually it can grab all of these with absolutely no piracy. Then later on, I'll have a bastion here, a new trade area over here, so all that trade value is safe until we can then eventually get gateways. Now let's put a gateway down here, and our trade value is secure. Remember, we do want to be somewhat aggressive eventually. We're not going to just sit here the entire That's game. I want complete. more space. I want more stuff. I want everything. Have they removed the ability to get extra diplomatic white from your allies? Wait, has the Temple of Prosperity replaced that? There used to be a building which would allow you to get extra diplomacy, extra diplomatic value. Oh, or is that a tech? It could be a tech. I'm tempted to put down the Temple of Prosperity, but we're never going to win out because this ally here, well, it's their capital. Governing Eth Extraction plus 100%. This would just never really make any difference. So I just guess more energy. Yeah, just give us more energy, please. We do need some more consumer goods, though. Maybe that would have been a better option. <laughs> but I didn't look before I started pressing buttons. So, a tech has been gained, and a modifier has been added, Research making terraforming optimized. cheaper. The tech is... Oh, so we have the ability to uplift. Actually, that's pretty nice. Okay, yeah, give me that unity. Give me those people. Do a space for one more edict, and this will allow us to pay for it, and that really being too bad. I'm honestly thinking just diplomatic grants. Uh, we really do want those envoys very soon, although we don't yet have the galactic community. That's going to be incredibly soon now, because, well, look how many people everyone knows. So, I think yeah, diplomatic grants for now. We currently don't really have the happiness available to make sure that extended shifts doesn't cause some stability issues. So, I think that's what we're going to go with. So let's pop that one here for now. Oh look, it's one of the um, the primitive civilization populations. See? They joined us and they're already succeeding. Our way of life is correct. Sure, some may be trampled underneath it, but ultimately, the majority will be bettered. And not just bettered, bettered by a significant margin. Special Why should everyone be happy when a few can be ecstatic? Okay, maybe I should have said that better. 
why should everyone be happy when the majority can be ecstatic? Utopia for some, decent living for others. God, I'm trying to make this sound better than it is. We're a bit more evil, but you know, maybe we're not. Maybe I'm actually convincing myself here. Both of the last two empires I've played, this one and the last, certainly have had dark sides. Think I may have messed up, or just I want too many things. I think earlier I didn't mention Defender of the Galaxy, did I? Even if I did, I still don't think I've done this correctly. I kind of want everything. There's just too... It's not even that I've done it incorrectly. It's just I want everything, and I don't think I can. Like, I want the Colossus Project as well. I'm now realising that going to war without it is going to be a real pain. But with our resources, we can make the ultimate weapon. So, Mind Over Matter and Transcendence. These are almost guaranteed because I really want to make the Covenant with Slanesh. We then want Arcology Project, Galactic Wonders, Master Builders, and then it's going to be a fight between Xeno Compatibility and Defender of the Galaxy. I am so tempted by Xeno Compatibility instead. Either way, that's going to be the last one most likely, so we'll decide then. I always forget how much influence uplifting gives you, that's loads. So, I've now allowed Crime to rise on the Circle of Commerce. This allows us to have Crime Lord deal. From this, we get plus 10 stability with plus 50% Crime, but a lot of the big negative events now don't occur, or at least they're less likely. I'm fairly certain that's how it works. Either way, when I have this active, I never see the negative events. We have no criminals or anything else. It costs us some influence, but yeah, plus 10 stability on our homeworld, that's... Just fine. No need to build anything else right now? No. Just need more populations, really. The galactic community is now here, so we are instantly going to try and push as best we can the galactic commerce and the divinity of life resolutions. Under divinity of life, essentially what it's doing is harming those trying to make machines and machine empires themselves, whilst increasing unity, increasing spiritualist ethics attraction, decreasing population, consumer goods upkeep, and increasing happiness from biological and lithoid populations. So really good for us overall, since we're not going to build machines at all this run, we love that extra unity, less consumer goods upkeep is fantastic for our profits, and more spiritualists. Once again, fantastic for our profits in multiple ways. That is just fantastic for us in almost every single way. Now, sadly, these tend to have pretty weak support because you really need spiritualists and fanatic spiritualists, otherwise they don't go for these. Now, the rank 1 versions, though, most of them everyone kind of likes. That's why the Reddit Shield is going to go first, most likely. Comfort the Fallen may go second. It all depends on how many start to vote for Galactic Market before the next Senate is in session. After this, we're going for Galactic Commerce, which of course is all about that lovely, lovely trade value. The end result is plus 25% trade value. It'll give us extra diplomatic weight from our economy. Our bureaucrats do cost more, but that's fine. It's not really all that much anyway, it's just a few consumer goods. Our navy will be smaller, which is pretty horrendous. But then, here's the big thing, plus 10% to all resources from jobs. That's insane. 10% extra research, 10% extra alloys, 10% extra potatoes from the potato farms. It's pretty darn good. Then it gets weird. Leader upkeep is plus 50%. Ruler happiness is plus 50%. That's our merchants and such. And happiness overall is a minus 25. Essentially, those who are in charge, those with the most wealth, become even happier. Everyone else, less so. But of course, this is somewhat offset by a defined purpose, increasing happiness by 10%. It's weird to say, but I am also tempted to allow for the science ones, since we're not really against science in this empire. And these wouldn't really hinder our other things. Yeah, we might go with this. I mean, that one there is really interesting. Unlocks the a planetary decision that consumes Ro to fund extra dimensional research. At Advanced Research Complex. I don't have a clue what that does. 
Not too sure. Maybe we'll help with this one. I mean, we could go with ecological protection, though this goes really insane later on. No, definitely not, since we want to have city worlds. That goes against everything. Honestly, industrial development is, again, something which would be awesome for us, since we're going to have city worlds mostly. Extra alloys, extra minerals? Yes, please. Our minerals are likely to come from our megastructures and from our habitats, which are megastructures. Wow, we want loads of these things. Though there is things like the greater good, which... I mean, we really wouldn't be against the greater good either. It's extra happiness without really hurting our economy. Um... Wow, yeah, this empire wants everything. Well, gonna be supporting a lot of other people then. Okay, excellent. Our home world is now 40% spiritualist. Considering we were under 20% earlier, that is a huge improvement Research for our empire. Actualized. Considering more spiritualists is more trade value. The Xenophiles are still the dominant force, but yep, spiritualists are now becoming more and more dominant as well. I'm always tempted to just go, you know what, embrace the faction, we're now fanatic spiritualists, but I don't want to lose either of these. Authoritarian is amazing, and it's the only thing allowing us to keep indentured assets, and Xenophile makes everyone else like us, it gives us an extra envoy, and it gives us plus 10% trade value. It's difficult to say no to either of those. Oh, look how close we are to making this. Nope, nope, never mind, I thought that was us. We've been knocked all the way down here. Well, on the upside, we can do this. There we go. Trade value becomes the first thing, because the entire galaxy wants money. Money's a funny thing. Oddly enough, people like it. Who would have thought? Cost of progress, minus 10% trade value, plus 4% monthly consumer goods. So this is the tax which we're paying to organise the whole Federation event. So really hoping something good comes from this, because, you know, I like my trade value. Don't know if I've got that across yet, but I do. I've just realised something. One of the resolutions makes even more sense. Industrial development all of the way. Because we're going to have Gaia worlds and city worlds, both of which the minus habitability won't affect, of course this empire is like, yeah sure, harm every other world, we get more alloys. Okay, remodelling complete. So now we have a trial period, and then we see how the trial played out. Once again, though, we're not going to get any support from our allies, so doubtful we're going to get much. Oh, hello. Okay, so. We get plus 10%. Now, I have been told there's higher than that for the trade value. I am almost certain I've seen that, but still, even that is absolutely fantastic. So, we're just getting plus 10% trade value, plus 2.5% monthly consumer goods, and I believe this is going to be permanent. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. That passive effect, plus everything else from our federation, so worth it. So I'm about to find out something interesting. Over here you can see all of the bonuses from the Empire, high stability and everything else. If this increases when this finishes, it means that owned populations in specialist jobs get the worker bonuses, not the specialist bonuses. Which is really interesting because you can stack worker bonuses in a number of ways. So, remembering what we had a second ago, let's have one last final check. So, the main one I'm looking at is from the Empire, it's plus 65%. Buzzword finishes, let the month tick over just to make sure it's all gone through. Okay, and now... Plus 67%. You are not a worker, you should not have got that. But I guess technically you are, according to the game. The reason why this might be brokenly powerful is because... The final version of industrial development is giving us plus 10% worker output. The end result of commerce is plus 10% to all jobs. And then we're increasing happiness, I believe. Here, not anything else. But still, that's just such an increase there. And of course, the fact we are authoritarian... Our worker output is increased by 5%, which apparently includes that as well. Our owned populations are going to be very, very powerful, is what I'm saying. 
And there are other ways to increase that power, because... Oh, extended shifts. Works with workers, and oh, that's going to be insane, though. That means... When I have more happiness, when I can make our people more happy, we have to swap over to extended shifts. That's even better than I thought it was because of just everything happening. That's pretty good. We are organizing a festival across our worlds, increasing happiness and population growth. We don't mind spending energy on others when it ultimately will help everyone in the end. Now let's put down some art pieces. So two obvious things I didn't think about. No, we're not going with the greater good because eventually it bans owned populations. I forgot about that because I wasn't really paying attention to all of the effects. I was just looking at the modifiers. So no, the greater good will have to stop after... I think like this point. I mean, even the second one's a bit of a problem for us. Basic subsistence living standard is banned. Oh wait, no, that's fine. I don't have basic subsistence because I have stratified economy. That's our living standard. It's basically the same for owned populations, but under a different name and a different set of rules, so that's actually fine. And the extra worker happiness? I'm assuming the worker happiness is going to affect our owned populations. So yeah, the greater good's fine there. That is when... We can't go with it, because this is then also the stratified economy. So no, we can't have greater than ourselves. Five-year plan and charter for workers' rights is fine. Everything else, we have to stop. But the final thing, which is obvious and I completely just ignored, is this. The worker output is increased, so are alloys. That means our own populations will be getting the bonus from both of these and combining them, so plus 15%. That's pretty nice. Reset. The Federation is now level 2, giving the President one additional envoy. Ship speed is increased in Federation territory, and we get extra trade value. All lovely things. What I want to do as soon as possible is try and set these to majority votes. War declaration to majority, invite members to majority. We really need the vote white to be diplomatic, because that way we can overrule our ally every single time. For now, though, we're going to increase how long it'll take for us to be kicked. All well and good. Going to move this. Research actualized. Now we're on low. Don't really care about the Federation fleet since our ally is too weak. And what we can do is bribe our ally to agreeing to... Oh yeah, succession type challenge. There we go. We're always going to be able to outdo them. Our challenge currently is combat, but we'll change that to either golden rule or thesis defense. For now, just golden rule. This is basically money, which we're always going to win versus them. Fantastic. So we have everything except for the diplomatic white. As soon as we have that, then we have complete control over the Federation and we can go to war as much as we want. So essentially we're being peaceful up until the point we hit medium centralization. Then we're not. Need to start putting these down. The processing facilities are a truly, truly horrible thing, but it decreases the diplomatic power of owned populations. Although they're not particularly unhappy. Yeah, they're fine. They're above average happiness. That's nice. But this still makes them a little bit weaker. In comparison to our leaders who are truly ecstatic to be around. Actualized. It also increases their output by 5%. Once again, just adding so much to them. So, a bit of a problem. We're definitely not going to get the confederation in our federation, which sounds very weird. Because they are now in a federation with the regime. Lots of federations very early on this time. It's kind of weird. I don't particularly want the confederacy because they have rivalries of all of these. So that would be just inviting trouble. I mean, it wouldn't be... Oh no, it wouldn't be difficult at all to get you into our team. Yeah, apparently the covenant actually likes us a lot. And we could already bribe them to join us, and our friends would allow it. You are, however, currently at war, so I can't invite you here anyway, and it seems like everyone hates you as well. Wow, we have two buffers, which are just acting as lightning rods of pure hate. 
Everyone hates the Confederacy, everyone hates the Covenant, we're just in the middle like, haha, we're safe. One more world becomes a Gaia world. Fantastic. Buzzword standardization has already passed, giving us plus 5% trade value and more diplomatic weight from economy, which is good because we're apparently beating a lot of other empires with that. Now, though, we need to wait until Comfort the Fallen passes before we can put forward anything else. I do want all that lovely, lovely trade value, but yeah, I think our main priority is going to be Divinity of Life and pushing this. For the time being, I've removed Land of Opportunity. I'm activating Nutritional Plenitude. Although we do have a lot of migration treaties and it is helping out our growth, it's not as much as the pure 10% bonus. And that also increases happiness of everyone. Yay! Finally, we're getting psionic theory. Yay for more influence. So from this, first of all, empire sprawl from populations decreased, which is lovely considering our main species is um, unruly, which increases their empire sprawl. But also, it unlocks the ability to become psionics. So after that, we'll grab mind over matter, and I believe straight after we can grab transcendence. So a bit of a drastic change for them. They're going from completely non-psychic to transcendent in seconds. Prosperity is now finished. That's why we have two of them now as well, which is a great timing. Having plus 1k research at this point, again, I've done better in, you know, actual proper tech-related empires, but this is really good. Our economy is looking great, our tech's looking great, our future is looking good. Not great, though. Mind over matter. And transcendence. So, at least now our main species... Oh, I probably have a racket somewhere. So our main species is now psychic. Although it's only just about the main species in terms of number. We can, however, convert people, right? Yeah, assimilation. So default rights is now assimilation. And let's just do one species at a time, since I believe as they're being assimilated, they can't do any jobs. Yeah. One group at a time. It's still going to cause problems. But it's not going to be the entire meltdown of our entire empire. Which would be nice. Is breaching the shroud a... Situation event? Yes, it is. Okay, there we go. Let's get that done as soon as possible. So we can start rolling to try and find... Slanesh. The galactic market is now coming up, so what I've done is I've nominated the Circle of Commerce and then boosted the bid once, giving us an exceptional rating, since we of course have fantastic trade value and everything else here as well. So hopefully we will get the galactic market in the Circle of Commerce, which will decrease market fees by 10%. Only 10% fees is pretty insane. Oh, Mighty Shroud, give us a decent- Oh, straight away, in with a presence. This would be insane if it's the one we want. No, the Eater of Worlds. No, definitely not. Sorry, Eater of Worlds, no chance. You're not taking some of our stuff. This is literally the Covenant, I would say, is the most against the ideals of our empire. We feed it stuff, it gives us extra firepower. No, we want our stuff. And occasionally, it eats one of our worlds. No. Now, for those who don't know what Psychic actually does for our populations, if they are a leader, they get some unique bonuses depending on the role they are. So, for instance, our current chairman is Psychic, giving us extra influence and extra government ethics attraction. Our researchers get extra research speed. Our governors get extra unity from jobs and extra stability. I think our admirals get extra fire rate. I can't quite remember, but you get the idea. They'll get extra bonuses. On top of that... They get plus 5% happiness, which obviously is fantastic for everyone, and plus 10% research and plus 10% energy credits from jobs. We're never really going to get energy credits from jobs since we're going with trade, but the research plus the happiness, obviously amazing. Okay, the next species then is now going to be... Oh, I pressed the wrong... Well, I'm going to do that thing I said I wasn't going to do. I'm now assimilating every single population we have except for the first two. Are we doing okay? Wow, our economy is strong. Just casually gonna stop most of our people from working. Eh, it'll work. Somehow. 
Really though? I am honestly surprised by this. Yeah, there we go. This world here, for instance, has pretty much no one working. They're all being assimilated, but it's fine. Okay. Our economy is the strongest economy I've ever had at this point in the game. Ever. From any run. So right now we have this, the recycling initiatives. This is a little bit annoying because ultimately it's the save the planet ones, which hurts a lot of other stuff, which is bad for our type of empire. But the first stage is perfectly fine. Yes, it has less diplomatic weight from economy, which is bad for us because we have almost pure economy-based diplomatic weight at the moment. But that minus 5% upkeep for consumer goods is great. Even though we're not consuming too many, because right now we have the stratified economy, or stratified economy, however it's pronounced, that's still really good. It just adds to a lot of other stuff. So yeah, I'm going to vote yes for this. Next up is going to be collective waste management, going down the industrial route more. Then hopefully, by the time that one's done, we can force Comfort the Fallen to finally be up for debate. Certainly taking a time. It's time. Maybe I need to sleep. <laughs> Funny thought. One more Gaia world. Fantastic. Research actualized. The Ministry of Culture. Fantastic. Man, I say that so often, but this is really fantastic. Trust me, it's fantastic. So, yeah, we're going to build that right there. This will increase unity from all jobs on the planet by 15%, which is pretty... Okay, it's fantastic. The galactic market has been established at the Ringo Money. There it is. Isn't it adorable? Which means now our market fee is only 10%. It's a bit early, which is really good for this. I'm already building my first ever habitat. Research actualized. I'll take a while with no bonuses, but yeah, that's going to be fantastic. Probably just going to be a trade habitat. No, it's probably going to be a refinery habitat, most likely. Okay, once again, we can look into the shroud. And build loads more city districts, because city districts make me happy. More trade value. Please be what we want. Wait, isn't this the one that gives us the chosen one? Oh my god, we already have the chosen one. <laughs> okay. Um, sadly, it isn't our current leader. Leaders, who is the current chosen one? That is my question. Chosen one currently isn't working. Uh, chosen one is an immortal leader that gets, and it's currently a scientist, which gets plus 20% research speed, plus 20%, sorry, plus 50% survey speed, and plus 2 archaeological skill, but obviously being immortal is a big deal there, and it's double the bonus of the normal psychic, so... Clearly, she needs to become our new psychic leader, our new physics leader, rather, and our new psychic leader. All glory to the daughter of Gach. Now, eventually, we will get the event to try and make her the, the permanent leader, but that will massively affect us. Uh, we'll become fanatic spiritualists. We'll lose our corporate ability. It's just not really worth it. But instead, we're just going to have a truly fantastic leader. By leader, I mean researcher. Normal leader, not leader, leader. Not chairwoman. We have enough wealth, now we may as well start just using it. So we're building up our fleet finally. And we are just putting down habitats because we may as well be doing something. Research oh, Covenant. I'm more likely to attack you than anyone else because no one likes you but us. That's right, that's my way of thinking there. We may as well attack you, because no one likes you but us. Oh no, apparently you do have a defensive pact with these fellows. That's annoying. But you do have closed borders with like everyone, which is good. Uh, do you really not have closed borders with the Confederation? 
Oh, good, you do. So you won't be able to go through there, which means you'll have to go this way anyway, so you'll have to fight us there. Or there, so yeah, that's fine by me. How about the Confederacy? I think you actually have someone defending you as well, right? I'm sure I saw that. No, is it just a case of only us liking you? Oh, in that case, I've got two people we can attack. Glorious. Still need to wait, though, until our Federation is ranked three, so need to wait a while. Research actualized. Time to build the fleet. We are now on level three in our Federation. So, straight away, we are now medium centralization, which means we can go ahead and have diplomatic. Okay, you're saying no, but through the power of bribery, I think you're actually going to say yes. Do you know what you love? I'm sure you love volatile moats. Who doesn't? There we go. Why did I just give you all of it? Okay, I overpaid then. I overpaid just a tad. Doesn't matter, we got what we wanted in the end. So now, with that, majority vote plus diplomatic vote white means I can do whatever I want. So if I want to declare war, we can just go straight to war. Of course, I'm still building up my fleet, that's going to take a while, but as soon as we're strong enough, Research I am going to start making some claims and we're going to start taking sections of enemy territory. I didn't even look at what bonuses we're getting. So, extra trade protection, extra influence. Yeah, we're at plus seven influence gain right now, which is lovely. Uh, might as well break some of the migration pacts. So at the end of the month, I'll update. Research actualized. There we go. So now we're getting plus 7.35 at the end of each month. Just one migration pact. Uh, you know what? I'll leave it with you just because, simply put, I don't want to get on your bad side yet. Well, I'm definitely getting our ecology project, but we can't really use that right now since we need a world with only city districts, which is going to be really expensive and very time-consuming and everything else, so not really worth grabbing just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Xeno Compatibility. So I have decided to not go with Defender of the Galaxy on a times 25 difficulty <laughs> run. <laughs> oh, this is not a good trade-off. But, uh, on the upside, this gives us plus 20% growth speed, plus 33% immigration pull, and on planets where there are two or more species, we will produce half species which get plus one maximum trait points and plus one maximum traits. But really, it's the population growth and the immigration pull we like the most. Even if we don't have many migration treaties right now, it's still very good, even with only one other empire. And then, as soon as there's two species, which I think is like every single planet right now, yeah, I think every planet has at least two species. They're all getting that plus 20% growth speed, which is really good. I think it's the only planet with only one. So I need to just shift over someone to there. Like one of you. Anyone here with that preference? But you get the point. Extra population growth. Very powerful. Okay, once more into the shroud. Whisperers of the Void. This is actually one I have never made a covenant with. Plus 15% plus 15% research speed, plus 15% influence. The amount of stuff we can get with that is insane, and it still works with our empire as well. We're driven to better ourselves, we're driven to get more, with influence means we can have more of every single megastructure. The overall gains are insane. I don't know what the Whisperers of the Void do though, I've never, again, I've never made a covenant with this one. As we reach out for the presence, the minds of our telepaths are filled with a chorus of voices, no more than soft whispers at first. The cacophony grows in intensity, a thousand voices speaking in unison. The voices introduce themselves as the whisperers in the void. It, they, claim to be privy to all knowledge whispered in secrecy from one mortal to another, and offer to share of these secrets with us. 
if we only allow them into our consciousness. A trifling price, they assure us. We will barely even notice their presence. There is an urgency to their tone. I kind of want to go with this just because I don't know what the effects are. So, the original covenant I wanted was the Instrument of Desire. Occasionally, that would make our people go a little bit weird. It would either give our leaders things like substance abuse, or a population, or, or even an entire world would suddenly shift ethics to random ones and stuff like that. Not really huge problems for the output increase, but still pretty annoying. Extra influence and extra research speed are both very powerful. See, I'm trying to think in terms of balancing the game. That is an insanely powerful covenant. Okay, I'm going to go with this. I still think it fits the theme of the Empire. Not as well the Instrument of Desire, but this Empire has just found this. Our Empire, our species has found this. I doubt they would say no to this, because it's being... It's a something being given to us, more stuff for us. And how would we even know about the Instrument of Desire yet? We would never accept the Eater of Worlds, but we would accept this. Oh god, this could be terrible. It is done. We have formed a covenant with the Whisperers in the Void, and already they have begun to share their secrets with our scientists and leaders. We will benefit immensely from their knowledge. The only downside appears to be a sudden upswing in mental illness. And, oh dear, among the general population. And some of our worlds are experiencing a flurry of unexplainable murders and assaults committed by otherwise stable and well-adjusted individuals. Our clinics and asylums are having some trouble dealing with the sudden influx of patients. Oh, no. I actually think I may have had this before, and I think leaders can randomly end themselves. Oh, no. The Chosen One can't, right? Well, this is... Uh, oh, this is going to be interesting. Upscaling. Ready your checkbooks. In a few days, the Golden Rule Challenge for Federation leadership will commence. Starting with the current leader, each Empire in the Federation will have a chance to place bids until only one participant remains. That bidder is elected as the leader of the Federation. And we have a winner. Sorry, lads. Oh, that's interesting. Is this going to happen every single time that's finished? Let me have a look at these uh, bonuses then. Every Federation member gets 1,000. We can... Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. So this one gives us monthly energy credits plus 10% for 60 months. Does it also give us back the 7,000 energy? Oh, we spent 10,000. No, it's both of the spending. But yeah, I didn't spend 10,000. Or every Federation member for 12 months gets plus 10% trade value. I'm taking this. <laughs> no, actually. No, for 60 months plus 10% energy credits. Yeah, I'll take that. Wow. Because we're the most powerful, that's always going to happen. We're always going to win that. So... That is insane. I love that. Research actualized. Greed can make you rich. However, greed doesn't make you very popular. But then again, it can make you rich. Yes, exactly. Thank you. There's our empire. Oh, does it mean that the other members perhaps don't like that? I'm assuming. Yeah, minus 100. Who cares? <laughs> the shroud has been fantastic to us so far. Will it continue? This one. Plus 20% research speed for 60 months. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, this run has been glorious. Yeah, the other empires are definitely still too strong for us, but... Incoming inquiry. Not for too much longer. The amount of influence we're getting is just insane. And I love a bit of insanity. I'm having to buy alloys just to keep up with this, and that's why my fleet isn't really growing, because we have so much influence. Just look at how many habitats we've got already. Got five here, and we're going to have four now being created in the next system. Admittedly, we had a load of influence to begin with, that's why we could get so many off the ground, but we're still gaining 8.74 per month. 
at this point in the game. Just wait until we have will to power to increase that by an additional five. I don't think it's going to be a problem building our ring worlds and everything. Our sati- our sati? Our city worlds will be glorious. And perhaps Saturn, apparently. Well, there we have it, the corporate embassy. I'm not sure if I just missed it earlier or it was a tech, but either way, we got it without me even really realising. And this is an important thing, because it gives the corporate empire a modifier of plus 10% to its diplomatic weight from economy. Which is good in the early game, because we want to rush our diplomatic weight, but later on we will become powerful enough that we don't really need this. So by the looks of things, the two enemies we're going to face off against is the Confederacy and the Covenant, the two which loved us to begin with and nurtured us, protected us from the big bad galaxy. Well, we're going to show our gratitude by showing them the light of our faith, showing them how much money can make their lives better under our rule. The Confederation and the Regime both actually quite like us, so those two are most likely going to be just there. I don't know what's going to happen after that. Perhaps the nation and the worlds and all these areas over here will become our next targets, but our fleets are increasing in power very quickly. In fact, we're already equivalent to them. Not long now until we start our assault. Research actualized. Until then, we just get more and more tech. Ooh, yes, mega engineering. We're going to need a lot of alloys. It's time to build up the ring world. What I need to start doing is building habitats on mineral deposits so that we can have some mineral habitats. The question is, where is any mineral deposits around here? Some minerals over here. Is it a world, though, is the question. Yes, it is. Okay, let's go over there. Pop down a habitat. For the future of our species. Oh, mighty shroud, give us something decent. Ooh, low probability, but worth the risk. Darn it. For 60 months now, we have less armor. Great! But we're about to go to war. Turns out we have to wait five years before we can go to war. The reason is, I completely forgot I had all the trade buildings here, and I removed them, and that activates a truce. So right now, I can't go to war until... Yeah, I honestly forgot that removing the buildings acts as a truce. Ooh, resort world. That'd be cool. I need more worlds for that, though. Do you have any worlds you haven't Incoming inhabited yet? No, you don't. Okay, this wormhole goes all the way over here to one of the... Oh, yeah, to one of the Fallen Empires. Have we found any of the Fallen Empires yet? How have we not found any of the Fallen Empires yet? Harmony is finished. I have Harmony. I'm tempted just to grab Master Builders, because this would help out with building up our ring world. Uh, the ruined ring world we have. It'd also help out with building the Science Nexus, which obviously is something I really want. And it allows us to build more than one at a time. Yeah, definitely Master Builders. Oh, we could rush... Ar no, I think Arcology is probably going to be one of the last ones. The Arcology is going to get us loads of alloys. That's going to be needed when we're building up against the Scourge. Though saying that, that would be good now. But we just don't have enough people. We need way more people for the Arcology project. It's when you want to cram hundreds of thousands of populations into a single world and give them all jobs in the foundries. But we just don't have that many people to cram there. It'd be like... Just... A very empty sardine can. And that's just sad. So, final three then. Let's confirm. So I want... Oh, I want the Colossus Project as well, but I do think Arcology is going to be better. I want Master Builders. I want... Galactic Wonders. And I want... The Arcology Project. We could go with the Colossus instead. The Colossus would allow us to take over huge areas of space. We could just avoid Master Builders instead. Since we are going to go with the Arcology Project, it means we're going to need a lot of influence to upgrade things. So instead, what we could do is Master Builders... Sorry, no. Is Galactic Wonders, Arcology Project, Colossus. It means we're going to build our ring worlds and everything slower by 50%. But at the same time... Or at least we're not getting the 50% bonus... But at the same time, we do have the Colossus, which means we can do total war, which means we can start becoming incredibly hostile. Taking over everything. Right now, we need influence to take over things. You know what? Yeah, I think the Colossus is better than Master Builders. Plus, once we get the Ambitions, we'll get the 50% bonus from that anyway. It's not as good as having both, obviously. And the plus one. Starting to think things like Xeno compatibility weren't really worth it, but they're going to help us get the populations needed. They're all good, that's the thing. Every time I think one is better than the other, yeah, it might be a little bit better, but it's still really good. There are so few 
Ascension perks I look at and I think, that's never worth the point. The only ones I ever really think that of these days is purely because I'm fighting the stronger endgame crisis. Eternal Vigilance is just not good enough versus the times 25 crisis. Nihilistic Acquisition is amazing if you have a specific Empire type in mind. I would say the only one I never pick is probably this. Enigmatic Engineering. It stops other Empires from reverse engineering your tech, which is good so you don't give them a bonus after you go to war with them. But at the same time, it's just not that fantastic. Even Galactic Force Projection can really help you out in the short term. Grasp the Void is amazing for huge empires based around a lot of certain things. Yeah, I do think that's the only, the only one I don't think I'd ever pick. And even that one has some use because it gives you additional hyperlane range. Hyperlane detection range, rather. Yeah, so we're ignoring Master Builders going for Arcology, Colossus, Galactic Wonders. Might as well grab Arcology now then, since it won't be too long till we finish off Supremacy, since our unity is fantastic. Research actualized. And increases with every trade value we get. And we're getting lots of them. It is so difficult to resist building more habitats. Having this much influence is Research beautiful. Actualized. But I need to resist, because I need either 5,000... No, wrong one. I need to have either 5,000 alloys for the Science Nexus to begin, or 10,000 to begin one of the ring structures. I also need the influence if I build the science nexus, I need 300 of that. So it's going to be quite a few months, I think I can get away with building one more habitat. It's like an addiction, I swear. Habitats, habitats everywhere. Really should have put that over a mineral deposit, but oh well. Research actualized. Glorious habitats! No, build the habitat, do the thing I was just saying, thank you. War declared. As long as people don't go to war with what I'm about to go to war with, they don't really care what they're warring with. Good luck with your war, fellows. Both sides. Both sides. Good luck. Have fun. The important thing is, have completed. fun. What damage spiritualists we have now? 68%. That is really good. Our main world now 68% spiritualist. Just grabbing all the bits of side tech. We could go with missiles for once this run. I mean, it's been so long since I've been saying, let's go missiles, let's go missiles. Well, we could go missiles. Shroud, give us something shiny. Eh. Oh. Minus 20% research speed, really? Admittedly, the shroud was very nice to begin with. The shroud giveth and the shroud punch you in the face. Of research. Just two more years. Well, actually, just over one year and then we can declare war. With the Confederacy. So, so close. Now, also, wait, I'll just continue to upgrade everything we have, which is actually quite a lot of stuff. Right now, we have 3k research. Honestly, that's pretty good. I've definitely had better at this point in the game, but at the same time, it is very, very good. And we are going to continue to increase that more and more quickly. So... Yep, that is pretty fantastic, and look how many habitats we have. Any of these can be turned into research or pretty much anything. Our population growth is good, our influence is insane, partially because of our covenant with... Where are you? There we are, the covenant with the Whisperers in the Void, giving us plus 15% monthly influence, which will stack with the plus 5 we get. As in, the just plus 5 influence, we'll get 15% of that as well. Upscaling complete. The Whisperers are very powerful. I'm still waiting for an event to happen, though. Okay, we now have Ascension Theory finished. That's why we have the additional... Thank you. That's why we have the additional Ascension perk. So what should we grab next? I guess we could just grab the Arcology Project and start working towards that. Oh, wait, we grab the Arcology Project. Um, I guess we're just waiting around now. For Master Builders and the Colossus Project, both of which I can't grab just yet. I want all of these things so much, but to begin with, we are going to grab this. Which will allow us to have one additional mega structure being built at a time, and increases the speed they are built at. So, there we go. It is sad not having the additional 50% build speed, but it's fine, especially considering we're going to try and get as many worlds as possible using the Colossus. So, the Arcology Project is going to be consuming loads of our influence, and any extra influence we have, we can just spam habitats. Because I bloody love habitats. Oh, we're about to go to war, finally! Okay, get your butt over there. We are definitely strong enough to take out this enemy. They have only one way they can possibly enter our territory since they have closed borders with their neighbours. 
So I want everything you have. Although we could perhaps get more stuff. Ooh, that has gas in it. So does that. Ooh, two sets of gas would be fantastic. Could I potentially... Oh, I could grab another world. Yes, more things for us. We have only our customers' best interests at heart. We have only our customers' best interests at heart. Do love this advisor voice. Probably not too loud for people to hear at home, but yeah. Don't let the baseless accusations of wrongdoing... The slick corporation. You. Our competitors is simply... Our psychic leader, in terms of our general, gives plus 15% army morale and plus 15% damage. Our Admiral gives plus 15% evasion and plus 10% weapon damage. Yeah, that is so powerful. I do love Psychics. Psychics are very, very good leaders. Research actualized. And soon we can build the Psionic Armies, which are going to be devastating. Because they focus on breaking morale. So it makes the enemy run away and then just sit there as they slowly break everything. station engaged. Lovely. I'm using so many lasers at the moment. I always love using lasers. Okay, this is going to be a citadel, right? Or at least a star base. So let's go for that. Well, it has no protection. And by star base, I mean star hold, I believe, is the one before. No, star fortress, then citadel. We are trying to build up to citadel at the moment because, of course, we want the Colossus. Uh, should I build another habitat? I mean, I may as well build another habitat while I'm waiting. I mean, may as well. Let's build more here. Competitors engaged. Let's just do this. Where's our turtles? There's our turtles. No, that's a half turtle. Oh, yeah, we have loads of half species now. Wow. Uh, what are you? <laughs> oh my god, you have all of the stuff from the species we've uh, resurrected. Just if, yeah, and slow breeder, sadly. It'd be awesome if you didn't have that one. Not particularly good on this world, but still. We have so many species now. Yeah, there's the actual turt lads. Though, honestly, I don't think it really matters anymore which one we send. <laughs> because, of the, because of the migration of all the different species, we're going to end up with a mix anyway, which is exactly what we want with Xeno compatibility. Okay, ooh, what's your population? 79! Yes! Land the armies! Convert them! our way of thinking. Well, actually, just convert them to being psychics. Hey, we're making you psychic. I mean, to acquire planetary that's a pretty markets. cool thing, right? Right? Well, I think it is anyway. Evading competitive fleet. One world is already ours. Let's go this way and take up the stations. Or should we wait? No, they're not heading towards us. This will hurt a lot, but this is the bulk of their forces. These have been at war, by the way, almost every single cooldown with the other empires nearby. That's why they're so battered and bruised and ripe for the taking. Their stuff is ours. I've had a lot of fun with this empire so far, can you tell? Greed is good. Greed is fun. I didn't even realise there's actually two worlds there. Oh yeah, I can jump now. Good. I apparently have unlocked jump drives at some point. No! That is really early. Thankfully not near us, but okay. That is a very uh, Oh, of course we've set it as early as possible, haven't we? The mid-game crisis. It's not actually the minimum it can spawn. In fact, it's nowhere near that. But yeah, normally this happens so much later. So, problem... The Fallen Empire is now awakened, and that could cause Research us some issues. Actualized. Attempting to acquire planetary market. So that's what our strike craft look like. These are the reptilian strike craft. Look like angry buses or shuttle craft. I appreciate planetary. that. Oh, mighty shroud. Give us something good this time. Ooh. Either of these is great. Nada. Well, at least it didn't hurt us this time. So that's going to cost us 10,000, right, for the first? No, 15,000. Wow. Okay, yeah, we just need to save up alloys. Uh, we just need more alloy worlds for a while.
Turns out there's two worlds here as well. A planet and its habitable moon. I am very okay with that. I should have stopped upgrading these, but I can't help it. It's got a big upgrade button, and the main building's normally so important to upgrade. That's pretty much it. We have invited every world. We have decimated their woefully weak navy. Get everything we want. Now, I could build another habitat while I wait around. We need to save up the alloys. I need to stop doing this, but habitats are just so much fun to spam everywhere. Ooh, plus 10% fire rate. Thank you very much. Attempting to acquire planetary We lost few, so few things. Research actualized. And we are done. I th oh, no, no. Still one more world left. Go on aggressive. I wish, I wish I would stay on aggressive Attempting after they landed, but sadly they don't. Market. Trying to resist doing any of the repeatable stuff got everything. Okay, Chief Walk, there we are. Best possible outcome. And now we have this lovely extra bit of territory. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a proper trading hub. One, two, three, four. Oh, I can actually move it further back if I wanted to, but no real need to. Remove all of these fortresses. Just to make it a bit easier, because I want to put all of our anchorages and stuff um, closer to the home system, just so I can manage it a little bit better. Just because I like doing that. So I guess I'll just leave these for a while, but eventually I will do that. So that's their home world taken, by the way. So they are pretty much done. They aren't really going to come back from this. So let's have a look see at the worlds and what we can do with them. For the time being, they're going to be very, very upset. Also, they're currently building machines, which of course we're not going to allow because we're going to purge them. Goodbye. So it will be a lot of their populations, sadly. And they're all going to be assimilated for a while. So, I'll check again once the assimilations are finished. Because it's hard to tell exactly what's going on until then. Oh, so many are being assimilated. Well, our economy is going to really hurt for a while. Something's just occurred to me. We have a covenant with the Whisperers in the Void. Something which this species... Well, all the species here had no idea about. This empire had nothing to do with. But now that we're converting them in, into psionics and they are part of our empire being affected by everything else, we're basically forcing them into this covenant. Do you hear the voices too? Because you will. Our economy actually is doing okay. Because I'm able to sell excess consumer goods and a few other things, we are keeping everything just about afloat. And I've just activated Scientific Revolution, giving us plus 20% research speed. Our research speed is doing Upscaling very well right complete. now. I do need some more minerals. Because I need more alloys. Future market survey complete. Almost there unlocking every basic tech, at least in research physics. Actualized. And the rest will follow soon enough. The first habitable section is ready for colonization. So the question is, do I start building the next, or do I save up for the thing I was originally saving up for, the science nexus? It'll give us plus 5% research speed even in its basic state, and plus 100 to all science. We need to just keep on saving up for this, we're almost there. Oh no. So the empire which awakened was the tech empire. And this is a problem because the other Fallen Empire is the Spiritualists. Well, they're going to war and are literally going to split the galaxy in half. That's great. That's just wonderful. On the upside, though, I've now unlocked one of the main buildings for our Empire, which is the amazing Galactic Stock Exchange, increasing trade value by 20% on the planet and giving two merchant jobs. Obviously, that's going to be built absolutely everywhere and it's going to cost crystals, which we're already running out of. So these Research refinery stations actualized. really do need to be refinery stations. Finally, we can unlock it. And we can also unlock the Galactic Wonders now as well. I'm starting to go against this just because we have so much influence. We can really spam habitats. Yes, Ringworlds are amazing, especially for their influence cost. But we're getting 14.2 influence per month. Which is a lot. So we can have a lot of everything else. 
I still think I'm going to go with it. But for now, though, the Colossus is our next thing. So that we can start the Colossus project. And then we just need to wait two years until we can declare war. Probably when the Colossus is being finished. Actually, no, the Colossus takes ages, so that's fine. Also, I'm now building the Citadel Incoming of Faith, a unique building, only one per planet, similar to the Research Institute and the Galactic Upscaling Stock Exchange. Complete. There we go. Which gives plus 20% spiritualist ethics extraction, that might be as high as the upgraded temples all the way. Five priest jobs, one high priest job, and that's the special one there. The high priest produces, essentially just like the normal priests do, just more. Okay. I honestly thought that'd be a bit more powerful than it is, but still, fairly cool. Through our assistance, we have managed to pass underdeveloped system utilization. Observation posts provide consumer goods while observing or infiltrating primitive civilizations. That's interesting. Plus more trade value and everything else, so that is steadily getting further along. However, this isn't. We're still only on... Oh no, someone has proposed that. Since when? Must have been recently, either way. Yes. Let's try and get that going as well. We need more power, we just need more. Just more. We need more, we always need more. More, more. More. I wanted to have the tomb worlds converted first, but they needed more city districts, so this Gaia world, bit of a waste admittedly, is being converted into the Arcology Project, and will become far more powerful when it's finished. The Trade League is now at level 4, giving us an additional 5% trade value and increasing our diplomatic weight by 10%. There's also some stuff to do with the Federation fleet, but of course I've simply disabled that, so not really going to happen. Also, I belched midway good through that sentence. Is where As a good leader it. does. As a good leader does. Okay, I'm now putting a lot Hello, more of our resources Isaac. into prepping our worlds for the Arcology Project. Research a little bit too slow to do that, honestly, but it's fine. The Science Nexus Incoming is ranking up again. And we could save up some alloys now to build ourselves a matter decompressor. That would be all of our mineral needs sorted out. So really, only food is going to be a problem for this empire. And well, look at all this lovely territory we could turn into farms. I've swapped out one of our edicts now for extended shifts, so we are no longer consuming extra food for happiness and population growth. Instead, we're reducing happiness for extra output. It's crunch time for the galaxy. Note that doing this instantly balanced our economy. And 10% growth really isn't that much of a big deal now we have so many other modifiers, so it is definitely worth it. Even if people are a bit less happy. Well, considerably less happy. But still, our overall happiness on our planets is fine. 77% for most of our habitats. 68% there, a bit of a dip, a little bit more here. Probably because of the unemployment. Our capital is at 90%, so yeah, we're doing just fine. A bit of crime, of course, in the capital, but that's because of the Crime Lord deal. Please work. That never works for me. It's about time we start total war with our neighbours. So, our Colossus is now on the move along with the rest of our fleets. I do want to see if its effects cause unhappiness even on enemy planets. I really do think it does, which is a shame. But it does mean that everyone will be spiritualist. Which will increase our trade value, which is currently sitting at 3,784. The only reason why we're not getting that much energy is because we're spending lots of it, but also remember that all that energy is also being converted into unity and consumer goods. We don't have a single consumer good job anymore. That's completely from trade, and we're in excess. Incoming transmission. The Silent Colony, a size 23 tomb world, is going to be our very next Arcology project. That will be incredibly powerful because it is just a huge planet as well, and the Arcology Project is insanely strong. It gives a lot of bonuses to the planet. The first one is almost finished as well. Project actualized. One more of the Tomb Worlds is also undergoing the change. The next one after that will be the Fallen Outpost. We just need to remove the active volcano, add one more city district, and it's ready to go as well. It's weird selling so many alloys purely for minerals to do this, but there we go, one more world undergoing the Arcology Project. That's a lot of them now. After this, I will be saving up influence for the Matter Decompressor, since clearly we need an excess of minerals to get this consistently done.
And it is also sad converting some of the Gaia worlds first, but they were just ready first, and I do want them ready as soon as possible now. The Science Nexus is about to be complete. We have our first city planet in all of its splendor, and the Colossus is now exactly in position. The golden age of the conglomerate is finally at hand. Finally, we will ascend to the level of the ones who came before us. Those who built the Circle of Commerce in the first place, we are finally at their level. Their divine will has led us to this point. Through covenants, through hardships, and through a lot of greed, we are now here. It's time to take the galaxy and show them the true way of progress. I mean, through our rule, we have the most economically powerful, the most advanced, the most technologically advanced, and one of the strongest militaries in the entire galaxy. Clearly, we're doing something right, and everyone else is doing something wrong. So this is the city planet. 100% habitability for all, plus 20% resources from jobs, and plus 50% population growth speed. Like I said, these planets are incredibly powerful. And their districts are amazing. Per district, although it does cost a lot of rare resources, you get 10 specialist jobs and 10 housing. For the foundry, you get 10, well, of the foundry jobs. For the industrial, 10 of the artisans. And for the leisure, you get plus 5 entertainers and plus 5 culture workers. These things will be able to create insane levels of alloys. And I've said the word insane a lot, but this run has been so much fun so far. Being just pure greed is... An extremely fun playstyle, and we have enough resources now that we can turn the Decayed Hub into yet a- No, we don't have enough resources, darn it. We have enough influence, but not anything else. Well, as soon as we have the rest of the resources, we can convert this into yet another Arcology. Our economy could be floated on alloys now a little bit. And everything else is certainly coming together. But with that, I'm afraid I am going to be calling the first part of the playthrough here, because I feel like... Of the 40-odd hours of footage I've now got, I think it's going to end up being at least two hours because of how many weird things I've done here. Not so much weird, just had to explain a lot of ideas, going with the pure greed idea, going with the galactic community once again. Soon, I'll be powerful enough. Oh, I can just do this. You know what? Sure. Emergency measure. Let's try and get this through. So now, much more pushing of the whole spiritualism idea. So, Tithe of the Soulless. This is the first one that hurts machine empires, and it seems like most of the other powerful empires like this idea. And they can't always bribe others if we don't quite make it. In fact, we've already got some bribes ready. So that would be very, very useful indeed. Things are moving very quickly here. In fact, we're only two off finishing off galactic commerce as well. I want all of these finished. Habitability doesn't affect us, so all that extra output is fantastic. The extra trade value will be insane for this empire. Again, we are sitting at almost 4,000 already, and that's only increasing faster now with all the habitats. We are going to be incredibly powerful, and as long as the endgame crisis gives us maybe 25 years before it spawns in from the earliest it can, we're going to be ready for it. And with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. We are entering a new era of war, strife, and even more profits. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, it's going to be Unending War, and hopefully the Endgame Crisis will hold off just long enough that we can get some serious territory. At the very least, I want the Covenant to be completely underneath our control. Then the Nation then the Union, then the Realm, then the Confederacy. I'm just going to go wee all the way down this Federation. All will be us, and all will be enlightened. Thank you again for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and goodbye.